As soon as I started the treatment, my doctor explained to me that I would have some rashes on my skin and also some changes to my nails and fingers and toes. Uh, but you're, you're not, never quite prepared just, just with that. Panitumumab, which is one of the drugs which has saved my life, also creates this huge photosensitivity. Uh, so I have to avoid sunlight uh, at all costs, basically, and be very careful with my skin. You can see now my skin's uh, red, and, and that's a product of the drug that I'm still on, even in remission. I still have that every two weeks. Probably into, uh, well into maybe the third treatment, I think I started to feel side effects. What they did tell me was that I could work with this treatment. Mm -hmm. Most people work. I wouldn't lose my hair. Um, minimal side effects, should not have any nausea, should not have any constipation. I had everything they told me I was not going to have. So I am uh, taking full theory currently and also Herbitox. Herbitox is a drug that causes the skin rash that you see uh, on my face and it's all over my body. Also causes your hands to split sometimes and your toes as well. So it gets very sensitive. My feet, I'll get cracks and fissures in my heel. And then sometimes the, the line between your nail and your toe, that will separate, you get a little bit of blood in there, and that, that can be quite painful. I started noticing uh, my eyelashes getting a little bit longer and curly. My eyebrows also lost hair and I get rashes. If, if you, I, I feel like I get rashes a lot where hair grows. I think the neuropathy combines with the fissures and things to just create this sort of strange kind of um, it's like a, I, I don't want to say excruciating, it's not permanent sharp pain, but it's just always there. You're always slightly bothered by it. I know that cancer is one of those diseases that people can look at you and physically know you're ill. And I kind of just was the person, vain I guess, but I uh, really concentrated on not looking sick. Things that I had to overcome. Uh, I think vanity is one of them, and, and I think recognizing that this skin is going to affect your, your, your sense of self. You know, suddenly your skin is different, you, you know, do you cover it up, you've, you've got a red face, etc. And knowing that people don't know why you're in this situation c can play with your mind. Again, people can look at you with this disease and know that you're ill. And it, it, that's what keeps folks from going outside. I didn't want to be seen. I, you know, even after I told everyone, I was like, oh no, I can't go outside. Looking this way, you don't feel good at all. And you don't really have, it's, it's nothing anybody can say or do, honestly, right? People can, I hope you feel better, I'll pray for you. But oh my God, when you were going through it, nothing prepared me for what I went through. And you have to go through it alone, honestly. In the beginning, it was very important for me too calm down and understand that at least I'm getting treated for, you know, the cancer and that my uh, paying attention to what people think about you was not as much important. With my fingers being so sensitive and hurting so much, getting dressed is an issue sometimes, so I have the help of my husband and sometimes my mom to button down my shirts or pull a zipper uh, because it really, I, I really, cannot use my hands like I used to. There are some times you might be, you know, getting ready for an important meeting or something and you've, you know, you've got your shirt all pressed and you've, you, you think you've sorted your net, you've come out of the shower, but actually sometimes the shower, well, I think, I don't know if it opens up the pores and I might get a little blood spot or something and I'm, you know, put on that fresh iron shirt and before you know it, you've got blood in your collar and you have to start over again. So, so there are certainly frustrations that you just have to, to take care of. Let's get together and talk about how it's just not the person's disease, right? It's everybody's disease, but how do you deal with that person? People have said some really stupid things to me throughout this cancer journey and I was like, okay, I had a give you guys like cheat sheets of what not to say. Like, oh, it could be worse. That's just dumb. Don't tell us that. This is the worst for me. This is the worst for someone else. So I had to be very transparent with my family because they helped me through it. So um, we talked. They know how I, uh, how I feel. Um, not always they understand how to treat the skin rashes. So sometimes they will try to give me an advice that I know it's not gonna work but I know they're coming from a good place. 
we had this saying when we came to chemo, dying to live. Welcome to dying to live today because we felt like this, this medicine that's really keeping us alive is really killing every single thing else that we did have good going on. So just trying to find remedies or ways to deal with it and um, do some holistic stuff to kind of check in because I felt like my doctor failed me at that point. In survivorship, you tell me nothing. So maybe was, this was something I could have been combating all along, right? When we're pregnant, they teach us to put all kinds of belly butters on to prevent stretch marks and to prevent the dry skin. No one tells, told me that in chemo to do anything but come to chemo. Things like bathing your feet in Epsom salts is a great solution. And I take my feet out afterwards and it feels like a baby's bottom. They're all smooth and kind of ready to go. So, uh, so again, just don't let it stop you. Just think of the remedies, take care of yourself. But you can't avoid the things all the time that are going to do the damage. So you just got to work out how to solve them. It hurts a lot sometimes when I shower to wash my hair. So I try to be very gentle and I use a medicated sh shampoo now that helps a lot. But until I find out what kind of shampoo was going to help me out, it was a long time. And it hurts to just, you know, rub your head with a, a, a towel to, to dry it. So I mostly use a hair dryer. It doesn't hurt as much. My legs itch a lot. I use some cortisone cream sometimes to stop that itchy. Uh, but, you know, I just try to cover myself with lotion so I don't feel as dry. Therefore, I'm not going to be itching as much. I used to use those skin adhesive that you put on it. It stings a lot when I do that. But on top of it, I also put Band-Aid. Um, and I try to keep as moisturized as possible my hands. Um, I don't use facial creams. I use actually just like heavy um, cream for your body because just like the, the ones for your face are not strong enough, I feel and I just have to be moisturized at all times, otherwise it's going to start scratching and it's gonna hurt. So my doctor uh, told me to avoid um, razors, to try uh, an electric razor instead, which is gentler on your skin. Well, I can't shave my neck at the moment because I have uh, this rash and infection, so I'll, I'll maybe take small scissors and try and trim the hair as much as possible. Don't let that um, affect you mentally. Don't, don't let that bring, bring you sadness. It's something that you're going to go through, but it's helping you out. Make a list for yourself, right? What will I go through? Go to the doctor with notes. I stay writing. So whatever I go in, um, whatever I want to know, I know I'm going to forget in the moment because it's intimidating, first of all. Sometimes you don't even want to hear what they might say, which is why a lot of people don't go but I make sure that I have a list down and I'm, I'm asking, okay, even if it's the simplest things, I feel like we just need to ask more questions and not feel so intimidated by the process. I wish I knew uh, what was going to happen to me, right? I had a, an idea that I was going to get rashes on my face, but I didn't know how painful they would be or itchy or what kind of treatments I have if I have like a, 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 an infection on my skin, which I had. I've been blessed to lecture medical doctors these days and that's been like eye-opening because you know we feel like they know everything and I think when we we put our lives in their hands because that's their jobs you know to save lives but we also give up all of our power we don't ask questions we're afraid like they tell us what they say and we just take it as gold we don't really investigate we don't really research especially with the diagnosis right you get the diagnosis and you're like look my life is over most people already signed out from the beginning. It's worth it to ask, what will the side effects be? And I've been asking doctors, don't say it won't happen to you. Say it affects everyone differently, but possibly you might experience. Just changing the language really would have prepared me. There's a phrase in Scotland, there's the, which has terrible weather, by the way, but the phrase is, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. And I think that kind of applies to, to this process here. If you can gear up to deal with with the, the problems that come with skin toxicity, you should still be able to live a normal life.